One of the things that I get complimented on the most while I'm live streaming from viewers is my visual production. And I get asked often how I do some of the things that I do while I'm live streaming. And the answer to that question is really simple. <sighs> Welcome back to the Streamloots YouTube channel where we talk about everything streaming and Streamloots. My name is Preacher and in today's video, I'm going to share with you some of my secrets to help you increase the production quality of your stream. Now, all of the things that I'm going to share with you in this video have to do with the OBS streaming software. However, most or all of them will translate into Streamlabs OBS as well. With a little bit of time and effort put into some of the things that I'll share with you in this video, it will allow you to be more creative as a creator. And more creativity is always a good thing because in the live streaming industry, there are literally thousands and thousands of streamers out there and you need to be finding ways to stand out from the crowd. So with that being said, let's get into it. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about is filters. Before we get into the filters, it's important to understand that we'll be looking specifically at filters with scenes and filters with sources. As you probably already know, all of the scenes are essentially a folder of sources that make up that particular scene. To demonstrate what we can do with filters, I'm going to use my room cam source, which is this camera right here that's now highlighted. In order to add filters to any source, you're going to right click on that source and then click filters. It's going to pop up a window like this. Now, this window will typically be empty if you haven't already added filters. But in this case, I've already added several for the sake of this video. We're going to be looking specifically at color correction, crop and pad, image mask and blend and apply LUT. Since I already have the color correction filter applied to what you're seeing on my camera right now, let's talk about that one first. Once you've added color correction as a filter, you can then adjust a ton of different settings such as the gamma, contrast, brightness, saturation, hue, and opacity. This is really helpful if you're not really using a high-end camera but want to get a really quality look from what you're using. I'm currently using a Sony A5100 DSLR camera, which is a high-end camera that can produce a high-end image. However, I wanted to make some final tweaks in OBS to get the image to be a little bit more warm, so I didn't adjust any of the other settings except for the saturation setting. At zero, you're going to see it's going to be a more cool temperature, a little bit more gray, a little bit more blue. And then when I up this 2.5, I get a little bit more of a warmth in the image. Now, you may not have to adjust any of these settings if you have a nice camera. And before adding it into OBS, you've done adjustments on that camera. But if you're using a webcam that doesn't have any settings built into it, this is a great place to go to make some adjustments to really make your webcam shine or to be creative. One of the ways that I've used the color correction filter is to create moments or emphasize emotions that I'm expressing during my live streams. In fact, I've already used one of those in this video. Now, you remember what I said about adding filters to both scenes and sources? Well, right now we're editing an individual source, but you can also add the color correction feature to a scene, which would impact all of the sources. So, for example, we'll close out of the source filter and we'll go to our scene here. And if we apply the the same filter, the color correction filter, and we decrease the saturation all the way to zero, we can now impact the scene entirely and make it black and white. That's what you're seeing right here. All right, now let's talk about one of my personal favorite filters, the image mask and blend. Essentially, the image mask blend filter takes the source that you're using, in this case, the camera, and manipulates it with another file that you add to layer together with it. I've already added five image masks and I've renamed them as Circle, Heart, Brushed Border, Fall Guys, Jelly Bean, and Among Us. Don't worry, I'll explain in a second. They're all hidden right now so you can't see the impact of that filter, but when I unhide this particular image mask, you're gonna see what happens. As you can see, now I am a circle. What I've done is I've added a white circle PNG file into the path section here by browsing my computer and then I've changed the type setting to alpha mask color channel. By doing this, the source takes on the shape of the PNG file that I added. Some other creative uses of this mask in action would be the heart mask that I've added, the brushed border mask, the Fall Guys jelly bean of course, and if you don't want to look too suspicious in Among Us, Image masks are a great way to be creative with any of the sources you have added into your software. Now, if you're looking for a more simple way to reshape your source, you can use the crop and pad filter. This filter edits the size of the source that you're adding the filter to by shaving a little bit off the left, the top, the right, or the bottom. For example, let's say that I wanted my camera to be more tall versus wide. Well, if I go to the settings here and I take away 
600 from the left. These are in pixels, by the way. And 700 from the right. And then I add that filter. I'm going to get a more tall image from my webcam. The last filter that we're going to look at is called the Apply LUT or Look Up Table Filter. You know when you're posting on social media and you have the option to add a filter to the image that you're posting? This is kind of like that. Essentially what the Loot Filter does is it adds a color palette to the source that you're adding it to. To add the filter, you'll do what you've done before. You'll go to Apply LUT here. And then once it's available, you're going to select the file or the color palette that you want to add to the source. So where can you get these LUT filters? Well, one place that you can go to get free LUT filters is GamingCareers.com. When you go to the website, you'll go to Shop and you'll click Camera LUTs. Scroll down to the bottom where you'll find that you can sign up for their weekly newsletter. And if you do that, they'll give you access to 30 free filters. Once you have some of these filters downloaded, you can then add them by browsing them from your PC and selecting the color palette that you'd like. So for this one, for example, this is the Clayton filter and it gives more of a vintage look. The Gaming Careers package does have a lot of options, so I highly recommend checking out all that there is. For example, we have this one here. This is the Kane filter or the Brewer filter. Pretty awesome. Shout out to Gaming Careers for making these 30 looks available for free for all streamers out there. All right, so that's a little bit about the filters that are available in OBS, but there are some other things that we can do to spice up the visuals. So let's talk about stingers and transitions between scenes. Back in OBS, you're going to notice a section called scene transitions down at the bottom, and this is a global transition setting for all of your scenes. So I have mine set to fade and I have it set at 150 milliseconds. That's the time that it takes for the scene to transition to the next with the fade effect. If you haven't changed any of the settings with the scene transitions, it's gonna do this by the default whenever you change scenes from here, for example, to let's say here, and then back again. There are some other options in OBS besides fade, such as cut, which is just an immediate change from one scene to the next. Uh, you can select a stinger, which allows you to add your own video, or you can add a fade to color or a luma wipe now remember how i said that this is a global transition well you can actually change that by scene so when you go to each of the scenes here on the left side by right clicking you can actually select transition override and select a different transition that you've added in as well this means that that transition will only activate when you select that particular scene and then every other scene will default to your global transition this is a really fun thing to experiment with to find the transitions that are best for each of the scenes that you're using so for example on one of my scenes i'm not going to do it on this one in particular but i've added the luma wipe and under the luma wipe you can actually change what the luma wipe does so there's several different options. The one that I really enjoy is the cloud option. And when I put that here, I'm going to change this back to fade for my global transition. But when I go to the transition override on any scene, the Luma wipe, when I select that, will be the cloud Luma wipe. So I've added it to my gameplay scene, and you're going to see that now. Pretty cool. Another option for transitioning from scene to scene is a custom stinger, which is essentially the same thing as what's in OBS, but it's something that's custom to maybe your brand. Stingers can be something that you've made personally or something that you've purchased within maybe a graphics or video package for your stream. To give you an example of what this looks like and how to add it in, I'm going to show you right now. When you go under scene transitions, select stinger, click on the cog wheel here, and then go to properties. You'll be able to select the file for the stinger that you have added to your PC. Once you've done this, you're going to want to click the scene that you want that stinger to activate on and then choose transition override to use it only when that scene is activated. So I've added my stinger and this is what it looks like when I select that scene. There's some really cool things that you can do from the visual side of things to upgrade the production value of your content. With filters and transitions and using them well and tastefully, you can really provide a cool experience for your viewers. Now we've barely scratched the surface when it comes to filters and transitions and so many of the things that you can do in OBS, but we wanted to give you at least a few tools to help you up your production value for your streams. Being creative with your content and standing out from the crowd is one of the things that we want to help you with every step of the way. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. And if you did enjoy it, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about what you saw in this video, 
or have comments about things that you'd like us to talk about in the future, maybe things that you've seen in other streams, we'd love to know in the comment section down below. As always, to stay up to date with all things streaming and stream loots, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn your alerts on so you don't miss out on the future content that we have coming out. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.